A small group of CBC executives have been allowed to get rich off the backs of Canadians. The Canadians seem to be flying by the seat of Justin Trudeau's pants. Money won't solve your problems. What a crock of shit. In today's episode, you're about to find out why the cable TV industry is dying. Because real life is so much more entertaining. We're going to continue right where we left off with yesterday's video about how Trudeau's row with India is causing a lot more problems than he thought it would solve. And we're also going to look at one of Canada's least favorite MPs, least favorite because she's so corrupt, uh, going after another government official who she accuses of being just as corrupt. And then finally, we're going to have a quick look at why UBI, Universal Basic Income, is still and always shall be a bad idea. Let's get right into it. Uh, while CBC employees struggle with job insecurity, with lower wages than they deserve, with a culture fear and reprisal when they speak out, a small group of CBC executives have been allowed to get rich off the backs of Canadians. We believe that this is not okay. We know that Ms. Tate and the CBC board cannot continue the way they have. Uh, Canadians, I think, are, are uh, not just uh, disappointed, but angered by the fact that uh, um, an 18.4 million in bonuses was given out to CBC executives. All right, I have to step in here because there's a bit too much of a delicious irony here. So as you can hear Nikki talking on the video, she brought up that 18 million dollars sum and it just so happens that the corruption you know the uh, meddling in taxpayer funding that nikki was found guilty of had to do with eighteen thousand dollars yeah she spent eighteen thousand dollars on a short trip to quebec with her family i'll post a link um, to that video in the show notes but yeah, it is unbelievable how coincidental all this executives, is. 3.3 million to top executives while threatening job cuts and the loss of local journalism, including regions like mine that has no CBC presence. This is wrong, but for some reason, Ms. Tate uh, thinks that everything's okay. Um, we, she doesn't seem to understand that her actions uh, threaten the legitimacy of the CBC, an institution that we should all be proud of. Uh, but I also want to indicate that liberal mismanagement is at play here. Uh, we know that the threat to cut funding to the CBC uh, was uh, uh, was also a, an instigator in terms of uh, um, or put into motion a number of of, uh, of, of things uh, that uh, that were deeply problematic. We also know that deep cuts made under the time of Stephen Harper uh, has put. Now you know that I can't just sit here and let that one pass without making mention. It's bad enough when the liberals are the ones still blaming the woes they've created on Stephen Harper. But now it seems the NDP, for some reason, thinks that they can pull this same card. I don't know what possesses them to think that. But once again, let go. Harper has not been in power for almost a decade now. Why are you beating his ghost? I don't get this. Weird, so weird. Uh, has put the CBC back uh, in uh, um, in irreparable ways in some cases. The Liberals may pat themselves on the back uh, for being not conservative, but imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. I wish we could hear from uh, all uh, um, uh, government uh, representatives that uh, uh, that do have a hand in how the CBC is funding and have. So here she is comparing the conservatives to the Liberals, or vice versa. I don't know which one, but I can just as easily. Compare Compare her to Justin Trudeau with all the. Uh, 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 uh. She has her notes right in front of her. How hard is it to read, Nikki? Holy she is cow! And have uh, had involved, had a hand in approving these bonuses. Uh, having said that, I think it is critical to move forward with hearing from Ms. Tate, uh, who uh, um, uh, uh, did not answer this question as it should have been answered when she was here. Uh, and it's very clear to me that Canadians deserve answers from the CBC, from the head of the CBC. Um, uh, right, right away, and I believe that we, as the Heritage Committee, need to make sure that that happens as soon as possible. So, perfect hit on the wrong target. Uh, this is—it's unfortunate that what's being said here is coming from Nikki Ashton because it's not entirely, you know, out of line. It is true, but I think we're way past the point of questioning. A lot of people called out Catherine Tate earlier this summer. She made the statement, I believe, it was back in May that um, it, the CBC was only still just in the process of considering the bonuses it allocated to all of the executives in the same year that they made massive layoffs and everyone just called it. Everyone knew that 
it was pretty much just going to happen anyways. It did. So we're way past the uh, stage of scrutiny. Now it's time to just follow through and just abolish the CBC. And even if the CBC was to carry on, I mean, why do we have an American CEO? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's the biggest. If you're watching this channel, I'm sure you are not a stranger to the recent developments between Canada and India. Anybody with half a brain knows it's just a smokescreen. Justin Trudeau was desperately trying to divert attention away from the mutiny that he's contending with within his own party, as well as the 400 million in stolen taxpayer money that he's trying to cover up. But sometimes we make a situation worse by trying to avoid it, and that's what's happening right now with Justin Trudeau. He has let off a powder keg. What we're gonna do is we are going to take a look at a couple of outtakes from an interview that Michael Rubin, a former security expert with the uh, Pentagon, did with India Today. There's some very intriguing takeaways from this interview, so let's have a look. The problem with Canada's accusations today are the same as they were more than a year ago. They're alighting a lot of the evidence. It seems to be um, the, the Canadian crisis seems to arise whenever Justin Trudeau gets into political trouble. He's now polling 10% behind the opposition leader. And when you actually look at the evidence which the Canadians are citing, there's not a lot of there there. And it, for me as an American, when I read the Canadian evidence and their accusations, we were in JFK conspiracy territory. Right. The Americans so a lot of people have been saying this on social media, especially when you take a closer look at the victim of India's purported aggression, which was uh, that gentleman named Najjar, and that he has actually been found to be engaged in certain activities that we'll call nefarious to bypass the YouTube filters. Uh, not only that, but people have also dug up the fact that he came into Canada on three separate occasions under three illicit means and was ejected each time. So while I'm not advocating any kind of violence of any sort, this isn't exactly like you were dealing with a good guy. Like this was not a good person. And now <laughs> the evidence that Trudeau was trying to leverage to justify his actions, um, Ruben is saying it doesn't stack up and I believe Ruben. Let's keep going. The Americans recognize the complexity of the issue. This isn't simply um, a matter of accusing India for political gain. Look, the San Francisco consulate has been attacked twice by Sikh extremists, by Khalistani militants. The Americans understand at this point that the Khalistani militants are engaged in organized crime, and therefore they recognize that not all is as meets the eye. That's why the Indians seem to also be much more willing to trust the American investigation, because the American investigation is much less designed to protect a single prime minister and much more designed to get to the heart of the matter. First, so that's exactly what we were just saying right now, that the top concern is putting greater scrutiny on the Khalistani movement. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that even in present day, CSIS is keeping a close watch on separatist activities coming out of Quebec, and I don't see why it should be any different for the Khalistani movement. I mean, maybe except for the fact that Justin Trudeau is very much a uh, far-left leader who romanticizes movements of resistance and rebellion. But yes, I mean, he just said it himself, you should be keeping a closer eye on the Khalistani movement. First, Canada, through initially fraudulent immigration claims and then chain immigration, has set itself up to be a money laundering and terror financing, terror supporting hub. And, you know, many Americans, many Canadians may not understand who the, what the Khalistan movement is. But when you, look, link, when you think back on Air Canada, when you think back on Air India, 182 back in 1985, this group is potentially as deadly and as vicious as Al-Qaeda. Justin Trudeau needs to be asking, why am I protecting these people? What's most troubling about this is the fact that an American, you see, 
Growing up, and I'm sure it's still the same with newer generations, we're, we're kind of raised as Canadians to perceive Americans as not being too worldly, not having a very open scope on the rest of the world. And yet, Mr. Rubin here clearly has a greater grasp of what's going on in geopolitics as, it, as they pertain to Canada than actual Canadians do. But it really is troubling that Trudeau refuses to surround himself with the likes of people like Mr. Rubin here who give you the thinking points, you know, where to base your decision making on. <sighs> and in today's video, I want to show you the history of UBI, the arguments for it, some of the arguments that are against it, and what the test results showed. I think this is going to be a huge part of our conversation really soon and I want you to know about it, so, so let's week, get into it. Two creators Hi. whose work I enjoy, Andrew Jeek and James Janney, popped up in my YouTube feed. Uh, Jeek created a video about UBI, which we will be going over now. It's very intriguing, of course, but I am going to go over why it simply just will never work. But before I go into my own little monologue, what I want to do is use an outtake from James Janney's video because it gives you a perfect scenario of why it won't work like it's so insane so let's just get right into it right now and then you'll see exactly what i mean right they saw this as just the next stage in the emergence of teddy or whatever amazon super competitor ryan cohen had planned in my mind like i said i'm 99.99 percent sure that like i'm going to make a good amount of money off of this whether it's like three million or less or 20 million or more I don't know. He said the plan will become effective on or about September 30th. So we're getting Teddy shares, man, right on. All right, I gotta love my dog. Everything that had happened up until now with Bed Bath & Beyond, Cohen's exit, the bankruptcy, and this, once more, it was all part of the plan. And it's so if you have any familiarity with the whole Wall Street bets GameStop uh, debacle that happened a while back, this is even crazier. Uh, because it did actually go right under a lot of people's radars. They never heard about all this, but we'll call it, for all intents and purposes, the cult of Bed Bath and & Beyond. And what this was, was an offshoot of the whole GameStop Wall Street bets thing, but it is insane. So Bed Bath & Beyond, um, they declared bankruptcy, all shares were dissolved. At one point you even had this ace of an entrepreneur who stepped in to save the company only to leave every one of the shareholders holding the bag. It was, it was, that's all it was, it was a pump and dump on his part, very elaborate. And rather than face up to reality, rather than just admit that the stimulus money as well as what other money they put in is lost, these people, these uh, they're called meltdowners, would just carry on this fallacy that it was all part of a greater plan. Like it is insane. And that's why I encourage you, I'm going to have a link to the video. Go watch it for yourself. You will, like, it, you'd be hard pressed to find something even more insane in the world of fiction. So when you watch James Jenny's video, that's it. Like, you're going to tell yourself, there's not much Hollywood can come up with to top this piece of reality. So with all that said, I just want to use an example of a city. Well, I'm, it's not really a city. It's a small town to me that's not far from where I live called Owen Sound. And Owen Sound is the single mom, one of the single mom capitals of Canada. And I can tell you right now, free money only perpetuates destructive cycles. There is no good outcome to UBI. If you look at the people, say, down the United States who got all those STEMI checks, very few of them applied those STEMI checks to life-changing endeavors. You have the odd outlier who somehow found a way to turn STEMI checks into viable businesses and good for them. I'm happy for them. That's awesome. If only more people were like that, then that would be a positive argument for all this. When I look, say, at the single mom example in Owen Sound, where you have a lot of mothers who have more than two babies by different men, right? Like we're talking three, four babies by four different men and they're getting, you know, up to 600 bucks a month per kid it just goes to show you what you're actually fueling with all this free money. Now, it does sound valiant, helpful, in theory, to grant someone an extra whatever it is, 1200 bucks a month. 
And I'm sure it would remove a lot of stress from people's lives. And I would be open to considering UBI if we were to cut other social programs. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Free Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.